welcome. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good Friday marks a pivotal moment in our Christian faith, commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It's a day that embodies deep themes of sacrifice, love, and redemption, and inviting deep reflection on those things. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember today the pain and suffering of the cross in all that your Son was willing to endure so that we could be set free. He paid the price to offer us the gift of salvation and eternal life. Help us never to take for granted this priceless gift. Help us to remember the cost of it. Forgive us for being too busy or too distracted for not fully recognizing what you have freely given, what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you that because of your sacrifice we can live free. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered and that your power is everlasting. Open our eyes to see the magnitude of this Calvary event. And thank you that we can say with great hope, it is finished. For we know what is still to come, and death has lost its sting. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. standing shamefully in a courtroom, surrounded by demons on my left and angels on my right, and Satan as the persecutor holding millions of records about my life. And God, he was sitting on a throne with a mighty gavel in his hand. I had no lawyer, placed on trial for such things as lying and stealing and fornication. This was the beginning of my tribulation. There was no reason to plead an innocent statement. All the evidence was sitting right there with Satan. 
<laughs> the demon smiled as tears rolled down the judge's eyes. They clearly knew that now was the hour of my demise. But wait, in came a light shining so bright that the demon suddenly jumped with fright and the man that walked in that night was none other than Jesus Christ. Darkness departed to give way and glory was all the angels could say as the man that walked in that night pulled out a lighter and set Satan's records against me on fire. He took the sentence and erased my name, looked me in the eye and said, daughter, I will take the blame. Handcuffs were placed in this man. He was thrown to the ground. The entire courtroom gasped at this horrendous sound and the sudden cease to the beat of his heart. The man who walked in glowing had now become dark. I did this to him. My lying, my stealing, my cheating, he took the pain and spent three days in the hell that I was supposed to go to for eternity. I left the courtroom that day. There was nothing I could say. I was found innocent for Christ handled the debt I was to pay. This type of love is more than you can give to a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife. This man died for me and I owe him my life. And even though my life is not all that worth it, how could you ever trade perforated for perfect? I gave my life to Christ and I picked up a mop. The lying, cheating, cursing, all that had to stop because my life had been bought and it would be a shame to sit there and do nothing but let it rot? <laughs> I'm not perfect. The will to sin has not completely diminished from my life. But I believe Jesus' words when he died for me on that cross and said, it is finished. This morning, we invite you to become part of the Good Friday story as it is told through word and song. Listen to the characters tell their story and pay attention to the screens because you also have a part to play. The crowd was an important and a loud character on Good Friday, so anytime you see crowd on the screens, that, those are your lines to say. Uh, we will be singing songs you may or may not know. If you know them, please sing along. And if one is in unfamiliar, it is okay to just sit and meditate on the words. You will notice that there is a melody that will return repeatedly throughout this story. Use this repeated melody as a reminder that you are the reason Jesus was crucified and also as a moment to be grateful that he was willing to go to the cross to be your savior.
Jesus went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you speak? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and they fell to the ground. And so he asked them again, Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you, I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fill the word that had been spoken of those whom you gave me. I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it back and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword in its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter stood outside the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? I am not. Now the servant and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. 
Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching, and Jesus answered him. I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Ananias then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. And so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. And at once a rooster, a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. And this was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The Change 
entered his headquarters again and called to Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this of your own accord or did some uh, did others say it to you about me? Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I, may not, I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this world. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come to, into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who hears who is of the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews, and he told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then, oh, I'm sorry. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns, and they put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe. Oh, 
Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify, crucify him. him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, Will you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power and the authority to release you and to crucify you? He would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour, and he again said to the Jews, Behold, your king. Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. Dying for me, wounded and bleeding, 
So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to that place that is called the skull, there they were crucified with him. And the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments, and the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we, indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Father, will you forgive me for my sins? Father, if there's a heaven, let me in. I don't know where to go if I should die. <clears throat> we haven't been on speaking terms for so long, you and I. I was lost since seven years old, being cast away. I felt the cold coming over me. For everything I had to hide and every tear I ever cried, I'm down on my knees, I'm begging you please, there's no place in heaven for someone like me, won't you open the door and try me once more, cause there's no place in heaven for someone like me, cause there's no place in hell. In between a solution can be found. How long will it before I drown? And in between those words we dare not say Do you think 
think that you could learn to love me anyways. I was lost since seven years old, been cast away. I felt the cold coming over me. For everything I had to hide, from every tear I ever cried, I'm down on my knees. I'm begging you please Cause there's no place in heaven For someone like me Won't you open the door And try me once more Cause there's no place in heaven For someone like me Oh, I'm down on my knees I'm begging you please Cause there's no place in heaven for someone like me. Cause there's no place in heaven. Father, won't you forgive me for my sins? Father, if there's a heaven, let me in. Father, is there any way to see? If there's room in heaven just for me. Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou be.
It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly, this man was innocent. And all of the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town 
of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their decision and action. And he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women knew who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness for the life is in the blood and it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us and in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Christ was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds, we are healed. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to us by which we must be saved. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. Oh, 
drowning your blood, Saint Brown. These above of the cross, Christ Jesus 
you to leave in silence. 